And so there are a lot of details about living in a, mir a miraculous life, but the bottom line is that for me, it was this gradual awakening to the power inside of me to stop letting my past hurts and disappointments limit or define me or what's possible for my life. Welcome to Living in the Miracle Zone. This is the place to be if you want to live in the flow of synchronicities and miracles in your everyday life. I'm your host, Marcy Shimoff. I'm a number one New York Times bestselling author, a teacher in the movie The Secret, and the creator of the worldwide program, Your Year of Miracles. And I have spent my life studying happiness and miracles. And in this podcast, we bring to you extraordinary miracle stories that will inspire you, we also bring you groundbreaking miracle tools that will show you how to live your most miraculous life. And it's my heartfelt intention that we have a fabulous time together. So welcome to the Miracle Zone. And today we are diving into the heart of transformation and resilience with our amazing guest, Layla Reyes. Layla is a remarkable woman. Her life journey truly exemplifies the extraordinary power of the human spirit. She has faced the shadows of childhood trauma, and she now basks in the light of personal freedom, and her story is really a testament to the indomitable nature of the human soul. And Layla is also a very dear, dear, dear friend, colleague, and woman person in my life. So welcome, Layla. I'm going to tell people a little bit more about you in just a moment, but I just want to welcome you here. I'm thrilled to get to have this time together. I'm so happy to be here with you too, Marcy. Thank you so much. Yes. Well, let me tell people a little more about your profound experiences that really have sparked a passionate mission in you to light the way for others who want happiness and fulfillment and truly authentic self-expression. Layla has been a coach. She's one of the lead coaches. She was the first coach for my Year of Miracles program. And what I know about Layla's coaching is that she really, really goes after that meaningful change for people. And she helps her clients navigate any kind of emotional or physical trauma. Layla has a master's degree in social work. And I'm so proud that you've done that because <laughs> Layla and I were housemates for um, with Sergio for a number of years. And it was during that time that Layla decided to get her master's degree in social work. And That's when I Marcy decided Layla would get. That's when Marcy decided <laughs> Layla would get her master's in social work. It wouldn't have happened without you, my dear. Well, I you heeded the call. It was something inside of you. You had some self-doubt. All I yeah. did was be a cheerleader for you and say, you can do this. Yeah. And yeah, you really yeah. have. And you've, I mean, what I got to see every day with you is your total commitment, your total commitment. You are the most amazing student. You are, you, I've seen you work from, from six in the morning till, till 11 at night. Now we don't recommend that for people, but no. you have done that and you have That's stayed with it. <laughs> yeah. And you, you most recently have written a book. You finally finished this book that you've been talking about for a long time. I know you've put your heart and soul into it. It's called Freedom from Shame, Trauma, Forgiveness and Healing from Sexual Abuse. And, you know, you really guide people to through this book. And it's your dedication to unlocking the potential in everyone that I think just is a beacon of hope for anyone who mm -hmm. wants to live in what we call the miracle zone. And mm -hmm. I just I'm so proud of you. I couldn't be more proud of you. You are just you did it. You rocked it. You've got your new book out. <laughs> you you started the Year of Miracles coaching program with us. Mm -hmm. And you are just dedicated to people. And I just. I just want to give it just the biggest applause to you. And I, maybe before we go into our normal questions, you can just share what it's like to finally, after these years, I mean, we started, you started this whole journey in 2012, was it? So mm -hmm. it's 12 years later. How does it feel? Oh my gosh. I am so excited. I, th I've never been more excited in my entire life to finally come to this place of this type of completion and the possibilities for the contribution that I can make in people's lives. I'm mm. over the moon excited. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, at, at some point during our conversation, I want to talk about how did you 
do enough of the yeses for yourself to be able to get to this point because it was scary, you know, when you were not knowing about getting your master's degree or not knowing about writing a book or not knowing about all of this, how have you co- overcome your self-doubt to say yes? But first, let's just start with with the question I start really with everybody, and that is, how did you come to live this miraculous life? You know, you did not always live this life. I did not always live this life. I lived, I lived in the depths of shame and the pain of that shame for many, many years of my life. And so even the possibility of living a miraculous life just only became available to me once I was willing to grow and then move beyond what was familiar to me. I had to get out of my own way. I had to let go of the past. I had to stay here in the present moment again and again and again, like almost like breath by breath. Like it really mm. took that much effort to get to that point. And so there are a lot of details about living in a, mir- a miraculous life. But the bottom line is that for me, it was this gradual awakening to the power inside of me to stop letting my past hurts and disappointments limit or define me or what's possible for my life. Mm. Yeah, well, I know that that's a big deal for everybody yes. is to allow, is to get past those past limitations and hurts, no matter what they are. Now, yours happen to be more extreme than some people's. Right. And, you know, maybe you could share the challenges that you had that you had to overcome in order to live in the miracle zone. And how did you do that? Yeah, I'm happy to. And and you're right on. This is something that I experienced with the sexual abuse, but I have found that this is kind of one of those things, this challenge that I experienced is across the board. It's a human experience, not a specific to the type of wounding that I experienced, right? So for me, the biggest challenge to live in the miracle zone is to get, really get out of victimization. I had to remind myself over and over again that the difficult experiences happen in life are not happening to me, but they're happening through me and for me. And that's yeah. hard. I mean, you had, tell yeah. us a little bit about what happened for you and what you had to go through and how you had to overcome that. So, you know, in my book, I share about the my um, experience with being sexually abused by my father and being a mm-hmm. survivor of childhood sexual abuse, right? And so I found that the easiest thing in the world is to blame the person who hurt you or to blame other people for what's happening in your life for not what's not working in your life today. But the truth is, is that blame just kind of keeps you stuck. So I blamed my father for the condition of my life. I was telling myself that if only the abuse hadn't happened, then my life would be fantastic. I lived in this, I, I what I call existential shame, which is a mixture of self-hatred and deep-seated belief that there was something wrong with me at my core, nothing mm. good inside of me. I really believed that. Mm. So yeah, that was, that was really. And, and many people feel that whether or not they've had, you right. know, childhood sexual abuse or physical right. abuse, it's, it's now, of course, for you, it was, I think perhaps of those situations make it more extreme. How did you overcome that? I mean, it's quite a remarkable story of what's happened with you and your dad. So I'll tell you a story. All right. So before I got married, my fiance at the time, uh, you know, we decided to get married and, I, you know, you think, oh, so happy, right? Such a happy time in a person's life to get married. But for me, I went into terror. I went into total terror. And what uh, what came to me was, oh my God, my, I'm going to have children and I have to keep them safe. You know, so I went and confronted my father and I talked to him about, here's the choice point where you're either going to get help or you're not going to have grandchildren in your life. And he chose getting help. And then we went on our way and got lots of help, lots of healing. And, and then inside of that, we were able to come to a point of really becoming best friends. Oh, I mean, Layla, I have, I have God bumps, I call them, because yeah. bumps, God bumps. He, just hearing that, you and I was able to witness yeah, the beautiful the relationship that you had with your father. I mean, just beautiful. You were the person that, that yeah. um, took care of him uh, yeah. as he was... Um, as he was passing on, you were the most amazingly devoted daughter to him. And the two of you really uh, worked on healing together, him healing his shame, you healing your shame. And I love that the impetus for that was protecting your own children. But in the process of that, 
you had healing and he had healing. And I mean, that's phenomenal. That's right. That's right. And really, you know, inside of that, it's getting out of blaming anyone or or Mm -hmm. anything, no matter what, whether it's abuse or anything that is going on in your life. It's about getting out of the blame, blaming somebody else for the limitation of your life and instead taking radical responsibility for yourself and your experience and what you want to create in your life. So that's really a huge key to getting free of anything that's going on. Anything that's causing you shame is to start taking responsibility for what you want to create in the future. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that you take responsibility for it happening necessarily. You take responsibility Mm -hmm. You don't. So how do you how do you do this? How do you forgive? How did you forgive? And how did you also feel freedom from shame for yourself? Yeah. Well, that's a really good question. So in it did make it easier. I will say that it made my journey was easier because my father stepped up and took responsibility. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you a secret. It didn't stop the impact of the abuse on my life, right? So even if I the healing that that takes place there's still an impact on on a person's life no matter what is going on what no matter what happened you can heal from that but you still have an impact yes. in your life and so so the key to that is really taking responsibility for yourself taking responsibility for what's yours to take responsibility for so in the in you know your if we were to like kind of put this into two different categories. What's your responsibility and what isn't? What happens to you is not your responsibility. The abuse is not my responsibility, but how I interpret the abuse, I need to take responsibility for, Mm -hmm. right? How someone treats you is not your responsibility, but leaving or staying in an abusive relationship is your responsibility. So I had to really get underneath that so that I could see what's mine and what it what isn't mine. And then I could take responsibility for what was mine and let the rest go. So can you give us some examples of what you took responsibility for and how you how you forgave? How did you forgive your dad? How did you free yourself from that shame? Yeah, yeah, that's a really great question. So I think that forgiving my dad was when when I started choosing take it like it there's a lot of different ways you can forgive but it's not about condoning the behavior right so it's not it was never about letting him off the hook right. it was never it was never about saying what you did to me is okay but it was uh, it, like t- for me to make an amends to myself for how i then treated myself in the in my adult life for the ways that i limited myself instead of blaming him forgiving him became easier when i was on my own path and i didn't not letting that limit me, not letting what happened in the past limit limit me and where I was going, not to use it as an excuse to not get to where I was going. That actually really, really helps in forgiving somebody because mm. you're, you know, when you're, when you're holding that blame and you're, you, that anger towards somebody that they did this to you, you're just staying stuck in a repetitive cycle and the shame kind of like keeps you in a cocoon in a way. Does that make sense? It makes so much sense. So, you know, it's it's more about how am I going to heal my own life and not continue to let that thing, whatever that thing was, you right. know, whatever it was, not let that thing in the past mm-hmm. be my limiter. Right. And so if if it means for you, for example, it was like, okay, I'm going to go back to school and get a master's degree and, right. and I'm going to live the life I want, even though I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it anyway. So what allowed you to go, even though I'm afraid I'm going to do it anyway? What allowed me to say I'm afraid and do it anyway? One thing was having people around me that believed in me, choosing to have pe- those people around me. You know, when you're when you're inside of shame and victimization, you can, and the blame, you can choose to keep people in your life that are not really good for you. Mm. And so one of the things was really surrounding people with that believed in me that, that even if I didn't believe in myself, they were able to hold me in that, you know, in that light. And, and, and then I could, you know, kind of take another step. And I, I, I want to congratulate you for being willing to let us in those, uh, uh, you know, those who believed in you, you had a beautiful circle that included your dad and your stepmom when you finished your master's degree of all the people who believed in you. It was like this oh, beautiful, right. at our home, we had this wonderful right. 
graduation <laughs> party. But it was it was this circle that we made of all the people that really stepped up to believe in you during that time. That's right. And I so believe in the power of being surrounded by those of us who can see the vision for ourselves that sometimes we can't even right. see for ourselves. I mean, right. it's part of why we do what we do in your year of miracles is yes. because you, you're surrounded by thousands of people in that program that will support you and, and yes. especially and, and a small group as well of six to eight people that support yes. you. So, and, and I don't know if you remember this, Marcy, but there was one the, one of the things that stood out from that day in the, in the yard yes. when, was um, something that really... I think will make a difference for for everyone here who's wanting to let go of shame and really live in the miracle zone is do you, do you remember that I I had a metal stake yes I went out there and I I put the stake in the ground and I said the past is in the past right and and putting that stake in the ground you know I still have it. Like I, when I moved, I took the stake with me. <laughs> I'm sticking the, to the stake in the ground. But it, but what it did was it was like a physical representation, a physical commitment to go forward instead of back. Mm-hmm. And you've just done it. I mean, yeah. look at you. You've done it, Layla. Yeah. It's really, and I, I just, I celebrate this so much mm-hmm. because I know Everybody has some things that that they know they're here to do, some yeah. things that they know they're here to to help with and 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 it takes it takes a village <laughs> to get us there it and it, it takes going forward, moving forward. And you know the other thing that I've seen is that there's a saying, your mess becomes your message. Yes. And this yes. abuse that you had from yes. your sexual abuse, this yes. is now you, you, you help people with any kind of abuse. Look what it's turned right. into. It's turned That's into right. a life passion for you. That's right. That's right. But you know, Marcy, when it, you know, it, in doing all of that, you know, um, there's still that fear inside a little bit, right? There's still that like, like angst inside, like here I have written this book and now it's going to go out into the world and everybody's going to see this. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, how, how, what, what then, what I've discovered in this is that my, I, I have a message now that's bigger than me. Yes. I have something that I have to contribute to make a difference in people's lives so that they can have miraculous lives. And that that commitment to that vision and to the people that I'm here to help and to serve is bigger than my fear. It's bigger than my limitations. And and so it's like, okay, I'm going to be scared. I'm going to take a step forward and I'm going to do it anyway. Nobody's going to stop me from helping people. Yeah, that is so key that your vision is bigger than your fear. You know, yeah. I don't know anybody who doesn't, who does things that are that bigger things in their lives that doesn't have fear. Right. It's just that that bit vision is bigger and it pulls you forward. I can say exactly the same thing for every single thing I've done in my own life is yeah. that I feel the vision pulling and yeah. I've had amazing people support me. And is there anything else that you want to share with us about how we can be free from shame and how that can help us live yeah. a more miraculous life? Yes, absolutely. You know, first I want to say that there's, you know, I've done a, a bit of research also. Like it's mm-hmm. my my own personal research in writing this book is what I lived through, but I also did a lot of research and read read a lot and the National Institute of Health was doing brain scans and and they actually show that the area of the area in the brain that's impacted by abuse. It's not any kind of abuse or trauma. And the significance of this research shows that you have the power to erase your own pain or to ease your own pain by extending compassion towards yourself. Number one key here. And what that really means is that getting free of shame requires you to take responsibility for learning how to show yourself compassion. And giving yourself compassion will lead to better relationship with yourself and having a better relationship with yourself leads you right into living in the miracle zone. So treat yourself with compassion. And, mm-hmm. I, and there are three things that I, should I share those? Do you think? Oh, please. Yeah. We love the how to. I know you, I know you love the three things. I, I love the, I love the, you know, this is where the rubber meets the road is what do I do? You know, what can I, and what can everyone who's listening to this right now, what can we do today 
tomorrow to live right. more free from shame and more in the miracle. That's right. That's right. And it's really about bringing compassion to yourself. I mean, that was the doorway for me was to bring compassion to myself. And I've learned that treating yourself with compassion is hard for everyone, everyone, not just survivors of, of abuse. And so the first way to start uh, bringing more compassion to yourself is to fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. And I did that a lot. Like I was really, really hard on myself. I was very, very hard on myself. And I made it a practice to call myself sweetheart and darling. You know, in the beginning, it was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know? But I want to invite everyone to start endearing yourself to yourself. Like even if there's resistance, calling yourself sweetheart will will alleviate shame so fake it till you make it and i tell my clients when they're they have that resistance i say i insist my sweet darling right so you so you have to really fake it till you make it and the second way to alleviate shame is to surround yourself with fabulous people who esteem you who hold you in love and if you have a lot of shame you might be more comfortable surrounding like i said earlier that you're more comfortable surrounding your self with people who are mean to you, but then revert back to key one and fake it till you make it. Yes. Right. Just keep going there. And, you know, and then the third one is, have you ever had a great meal, Marcy? Like oh, I have. Meal? Have you ever gone for seconds? Yes, I have. <laughs> so, okay. This is, you know, you can't help yourself going for seconds. So the third way to alleviate shame is to get a second helping of compassion, when you catch yourself being harsh with yourself, stop. And you can you can put your hands up like this, like to really just go stop. So, so you're just putting your hands up in front of you for those stop. of you who are just listening. Yep. Yes. And because because the um, shame is internalized. And so when you catch yourself being hard on yourself, being shaming yourself, then you want to put your hands up in front of you, stop. And what, what it does is it externalizes the shame. And then you can say out loud, you know, you're going to say stop stop talking to myself like this is no longer good for me. Mm. You're just making a statement. Mm -hmm. So stop talking to myself like this. It's no longer good for me. Exactly. And then you can kind of put your hands on your, if people are listening, right, just on your, you know, on your arms, like you're wrapping yourself in a sweet hug, you know, and then just tenderly say something kind to yourself. And that's where you can say, oh, sweetheart, it's okay. I'm here for you. I love you. That's okay. We'll get through this, whatever it takes. And always refer it back to fake it till you make it. Even if it's hard, do the, do these things and you will start to loosen up the, the wound up ball of shame yarn. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Yeah. That's, that is so, uh, I love the self-compassion. And I'm going to add to that something else that I've seen you do a lot of. Yeah. And that is gratitude. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we often, we would, we would share when we were t- living in the same home, um, we would have Thanksgiving dinners together. Yeah. And your dad and your stepmom would come yes. and all of our friends would come and my family would come and we would do a ritual where we went around the table and we were, We were sharing our gratitude. And I think that gratitude is actually a gift of self-compassion as well. That when we are grateful for ourselves, for things about ourselves, that's a compassionate thing to do. So when you're saying, you know, oh, I'm not very good at that. Instead, just go, okay, you know what? I'm really grateful for the ways in which I show up authentically to the best of my ability. Whatever it is that you're grateful for, that. I think is a step of self-compassion as well. Agreed. Yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, Layla, you have started a podcast now that's yeah. called um, Courageous Conversations. And I am I know that really helps people get free of shame. Maybe can you talk to us a little bit about your podcast? Sure, sure. And shame can really only live in the darkness and that secrecy. It can't live in the light. And so when you give voice to what you feel shame around, it disappears. And so when I say out loud, for example, I was sexually abused by by my father, I did nothing wrong. A layer of shame dissipates from Mm. all of us who've had that experience. And so in the podcast, those are some of the things I'll share some stories, some will have, I have experts on there, but all of it is around alleviating the shame and talking about it, bringing forth you know, the conversation, the courageous conversations that we need to have with professionals, with each other, whoever wants to have this conversation. 
so that we can stop abuse on the planet. And that is, and it's, it's huge. I mean, if you look at all the, the war on the planet, you look at everything, yeah. it's, it's, ex- yeah. it's extreme, the extreme of abuse. Yes, it is. But it really starts with each of us stopping the abuse that we do to ourselves. Yes. And being more self-compassionate, more loving, you know, and shame is a form of abuse to ourselves. It is. You're right on with that. So we get to free ourselves from all of that shame. You are, you have become such an expert on this topic. And I, I love, I, I didn't share the story about how Layla used to wake up at four in the morning mm-hmm. and she would drive three hours to the women's prison. What's it called? Coachella. 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 And work. Couchilla, tell us about what you did there because that was phenomenal. Sure. So I would work with women who were convicted of murder and, um, and they would, um, you know, they're, so they're in prison and they're in this program and I would work with them over a year and a half to come to a point where they could meet with, take responsibility, give themselves compassion for sure. And then sit in a circle with people who had somebody in their lives uh, murdered, killed in some way, and to sit in the circle together with everyone and tell their stories. And I'm very, very happy to say that at least half of the women that I worked with, uh, with life sentences, have um, gotten out of prison. Wow. Wow. And they're living really beautiful lives. I mean, you've shared with me some of the stories of these women that really, they were in life, life sentence for murder. Yeah. And yeah. there's a complete real healing there and living. There is. And that's, you know, what we're talking about with that is a restorative justice, restorative practices instead of retributive practices. Mm-hmm. So the, the process that we brought in was a restorative where you, where you're really restoring your relationship with yourself and the choices that you made. And that is a, that is a form of compassion, right? Alleviating the shame so that you can really have a lot of compassion. I think that's the core of the work that I did there. It's so exquisite. And, and, you know, you and I are both so such advocates for helping everybody live more and more in the miracle zone, that place where life is in the flow, where synchronicities happen, where there's love. And what I, I so deeply appreciate about what you've done is how you yourself have moved your life into the miracle zone. You are in the flow and you aren't looking for your outside circumstances to help you be in the flow. You are in the flow. And as a result, your outside circumstances really work. And yeah. you have just, you've <laughs> been a, a coach for your year of miracles for the last nine years, I think. And this is 11 years, 11 years. Year. Oh my God. This is amazing. The year. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I know it's the 11th year of the program. It's the 10th right. year of the coaching yeah. piece. Yeah. Right. And so is there any last wisdom that you want to share with us about uh, freedom from shame, which the book is new. It's out. It's everywhere. You'll be able to find it on Amazon, on any, anywhere. And I highly recommend that yeah. you read this. It is moving. It is transformative. It is practical. And it is, it'll give you God bumps as you, as you read through it. So um, any, anything you want to share with us? I just really want to encourage anyone, no matter what your circumstances are, no matter how um, limited you feel in your life right now, to take a step back, to give yourself some compassion and to, no matter what, to commit to taking a step forward, surrounding yourself with people that um, that are really good for you and to just continue, continue, continue. Because if I can get out of, if I can free myself from shame, you can too. Thank you, Layla. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And, and for more information about Layla, you can go to LaylaReyes.com and all of that link will be in our show notes. The book itself, you can find anywhere. It's Freedom from Shame and the podcast, Courageous Conversations. Layla, You are a light in the world. You are a light in my life. And I'm so, so proud of you and grateful to you for for all that you do to help people live more in the miracle zone. I love you. Love, love, love Love you too, sweetheart. And I'm going to end with a quote from Layla Reyes, who said, life's greatest wounds 
bring wisdom and compassion, which can bring healing to many people. You can turn your wound into a contribution, which makes a difference in the world. And that is what you have done, Layla. I want to thank you all for listening today. I hope that you are feeling inspired and uplifted and more in the miracle zone after our time together. And if you enjoyed this episode, we so appreciate your five-star ratings, your reviews, and please share the Miracle Zone with, with your friends and your family. The more Miracle Zone love, the better. If you if you want to live more in the Miracle Zone, you can take our free two-minute quiz to find out what your miracle superpower is. Just go to quiz.youryearofmiracles.com. And please remember, your life of miracles is waiting for you. It is your birthright. And may you live more and more each day in the Miracle Zone. Lots of love. Mm -hmm.